Okay, so this is what it looks like when you download the retro pack. You get uh, a bunch of different motion graphic templates and I guess the only thing to note here is the logo hit is the only thing that has to be opened in CC 2021. But uh, the first thing I wanna dive into is just the actual ProRes files. So I'm just gonna drag this into Premiere real quick just to show you the rundown. So they're just actual um, like rendered out files with an alpha channel underneath so if you were to have let's see what do i got in my downloads that i can just drag on here if you were to have something underneath this would be uh wow it's like the worst example of all time but yeah um you can put anything you want there's a couple different ways you could do it but um for me what i was i was using was just a tint effect and then since these are white you could just choose you know maybe i want it to be like a purpley blue and that's it same thing with the grid and then i'll just dive over here to the uh, retro pack so for this opener i actually duplicated it right on the bottom one you can just see that's how i added that little glow here so first off when you drag it and just add a tint effect that's what that's what it looks like and then i duplicated it i just held option dragged it underneath or on top whatever you want and then added a nice blur, turn it up to 50 and you get a little glow. That's just a little little hack that I use inside Premiere. With everything in this pack, make sure you play with the uh, opacity slider and the blending modes. All right, moving on. So first up, I'll dive into this one and this is the one that you need to open in CC 2021. It will not open in prior versions of Premiere. You get to choose between the assets that I just showed um, and yeah, you can see directly how I made it and then we have a couple controls here. So we got some noise and some 8-bit, choose the colors, the frame rate of how this actually plays back um, to really get that like, you know, arcade slow feel. And then here's the big thing right here. So uh, that's my logo, obviously. And then um, you just go over here and replace from Finder. So let's, uh, let's put this little guy in here. And the key thing here is to make sure it's a PNG because that way when the actual logo comes through it's not actually creating like a box or something like that unless that actually is your logo in which case that would work. So you got a couple of different options here to actually try to get it in the, uh, the bounding box there and then you can play with the actual scale and the position of the, of the logo as well as some controls up here too and when I just had my logo there, it was just a white logo mark. So having a fill actually worked, but for this case, it, it doesn't work at all, you can see, because if I fill it with a color, you lose the logo completely. So this would be something that I would have to edit prior to bringing it in. Yeah, and of course you can change all the colors, and um, yeah, we'll move on from this one. So I'll move quickly to this one since I'm already in, kind of in this category. This one also has a stroke and solid and they're pretty much the same as the logo hit except now you can use them in CC 2020 and exactly the same vibe. So you have instead of a logo replace, you can replace it with text, text position, glow amount, both the colors and uh, same thing, noise or 8-bit and how much you want to kind of crush that. Yeah, just some fun, you know, like synth wave, vapor wave kind of style. All right, moving on. Okay, next up we got the Retro Fallen. And again, we got the solid and we have the stroke. There's not too much going on here. Uh, for most of these things, they have identical controls. So for this one, instead of it falling back out, you can just turn that off. So the animation just comes in and runs straight to the end. Uh, noise, 8-bit again, and uh, a blur amount, just to take the uh, the harsh 
digital edge off of it. I think that's really where uh, you'll sell the whole retro vibe. And then coming in, so you can actually change all, uh, let's give my computer a second here. So you can actually change all these different colors. See if I uh, change the purple to like a bright red, you'll see that here. And yeah, whatever text that you choose is gonna end up in stroke format. And then the finishing color, uh, when it actually transitions and they all combine into one, you can choose what that'll be. So maybe I want it to be green. And yeah, moving on. This one kind of started off as a joke, but uh, <laughs> if you've ever seen like Star Trek or something, you know, beat me up Scotty. Uh, that's where that kind of came from. So let's dive into the controls here. Um, same thing as always, scale left, right. And then we got a new control, which is the beam direction. Let's see if I can hit it where it actually comes in. So generally in Star Trek, it comes from above. Um, but hey, if that's not your, if it's not your jam, you can do like a 45 or you know a 90 from the side, and we'll turn the the glow off as well. And the 8 bit. All right. So now we got it coming in and out from the side. All right. Let's move on to the next one. All right. So we're almost done here. This one I can't like help but hear sound effect in my head when this thing happens. Uh, same thing, stroke and solid and it's time responsive with that in and out. And pretty much the same controls as always. Let's dive in here. So uh, noise, you can turn those, those TV lines, those scan lines off. Uh, we got the 8-bit again. A quick note about the 8-bit slider. I call the 8-bit crusher. The closer to one you get, the more gnarly that effect is, and then if you scroll it up higher, uh, like the less uh, effect it'll apply. And same thing with this uh, blur slider, just to uh, get rid of those digital edges. And for that intro, uh, here are your trail color options. I just kind of applied, you know, a really vintage um, color palette to begin with. And then, yeah, when it all comes together, you get to choose your main color pretty much the same as all of them. So let's move on to the last one here, which actually is my favorite one, uh, to be completely honest, but this one is not time responsive. And the only thing different here is we got the uh, RGB split, which is really reminds me of like a good VHS vibe. So yeah, you can see what that looks like when you turn it off and on. Uh, and same thing, blur really plays a big part in this one. Now you can pretty much put whatever uh, font you want in here and make it look like it was, you know, playing back over a, a VHS. And because this one isn't time responsive, I purposely made this one uh, so that it could loop. So pretty much wherever you slice it, it should loop pretty seamlessly, but uh, I did make it at the end is where the actual loop begins and starts. So, and what I'll say about this one too is right now I don't have any uh, position and scale sliders on this. For text scaling, you can just use the one built into the font uh, and scale it that way. And then for the position controls, just use the effect controls and uh, it'll get the same job done. Okay, so you can see here in my timeline exactly where it loops and it's pretty seamless in my opinion. But uh, yeah, this one's my favorite for sure. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it too. If there's any problems or controls aren't really working for you or you need some explanations on things send me a dm on instagram or just hit me in the email and i'll get back to you as soon as i can i definitely am trying to make th these things better and um, i can only do that with your help and feedback so yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace